Welcome to Columbros, the podcast where bros talk about Columbo. I am a Columbro, Jeff Grubb, joined by fellow Columbro, Mike Minotti. How are you doing? Hello, I'm f- feeling very Columbo today. I am uh, yeah. also feeling Columbo y. Uh, we, we watched uh, Blueprint for Murder, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But I uh, got to say, I am. More and more happy we're doing this this podcast because it is this is uh, becoming a very comforting show for me. Already was, but it's like even more so. And uh, one of, uh, episodes like this really hit that home for me. Yeah, you know it's funny because this is not one I'm watching for a second time now, and I'm still. I, I thought I was just gonna kind of put it on the background. I did other things to remind myself. Now it's just mostly focusing on it. So I was like, oh, this is a lot of fun, isn't this? Yeah, a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of good characters, a lot of good moments. Um, you know, there's definitely stuff to talk about in terms of uh, how this uh, uh, solve is different from previous solves for, for Columbo. Um, but yeah, I don't know that we should just hop right into it. Uh, this, like we said, blueprint for murder, as always, starting pe- starring Peter Falk as Lieutenant Columbo uh, with Patrick O'Neill as Elliot, Elliot Markham. Uh, Bo Williamson is played by Forrest Tucker, Goldie by Janice Page and Jennifer Williamson by Pamela Austin. Those are our key players. This is the, uh, it's notable, the first and only episode directed by Peter Falk himself, Columbo. And yeah, we talked earlier about how that was a sticking point at some point during the show's run. He walked off set uh, upset about it, too. So, um, yeah, he did get his chance there. Yep, he did. And that's, uh, you know, I think for the most part, feels like Columbo. So no, kind of nothing weird there. Um, yeah. This episode starts with an angry cowboy or what looks like an angry cowboy. <laughs> um, he is he is angry riding cowboy. up uh, onto Elliot Markham and Associates Law Firm. He bursts in, uh, talks to the secretary, blows past her, goes to the office, and he uh, looks upon a huge city construction sort of model. And the secretary comes in after him. It's like, you can't be in here. But she sees him looking at it. And she says, hey, are, are you proud of this? Is it Williamson City. And uh, and he's like, mm. he kind of growls and, <laughs> and does yes at the same time. And then he just beats the hell out of it and rips hell it all yeah. apart. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, all right, cool. Sent this guy up. Uh, he, he's not happy. Um, he does ask, though, he asks the secretary, hey, where can I find Elliot Markham? The uh, Markham of Markham and Associates. Um she says he's at the construction site. Go tra- track, track him down there. He does so. He is still a pissed cowboy when he arrives there as well. And everyone notices it. Everyone's like, that is one very angry man with a giant cowboy hat. Um, he is riding around all over the place looking for Al- Elliot. Elliot sees him. Elliot, uh, Elliot Markham, who is uh, overseeing this construction site, sees Bo Williamson looking for him from a distance, but ignores him, just lets him kind of fume uh, until Bo eventually does find Elliot Markham and they have it out a little bit. Uh, at this point, like, how are, you, how are you feeling about our two key players? I think they're both pretty fun. The victim has this kind of uh, this transplanted Texan tycoon in L.A., it's good stuff here. And yeah, you know, part of it is just always fun. Like, well, what is the murderer's job this time? And it's architect. Yep. There's a lot of possibilities there. A lot of possibilities. And they will be explored in, in this and, and in a number of ways. Uh, the the core issue here is Williamson has been in Europe for weeks and he's pissed as hell that Elliot Markham and Bo Williamson's wife have basically gone ahead with the plans for Williamson City without his approval and they are spending his money. They're it's an expensive city. He doesn't care. It's named after him. His name doesn't mean nearly as much as his wallet, Jeff. That's right. He's like, yeah, he doesn't care about his legacy. He wa- he has his money. He wants to keep his money. Um, and it's it's very clear. This is a relationship that is going to fall apart. Bo Williamson is done with Elliot Markham. Uh, oh, my gosh. There's that moment where there, there's this incredible moment where while they're talking, where um, Bo Williamson just says to Elliot Markham, you really would like to see me dead. And you, you, know, you know why he says that? Because he's like, because Elliot Markham says, can you let me design your burial vault? <laughs> like, that's what he says to him. And then it's he's incredible. Like, you would like to see me dead, wouldn't you? And it's like, and Elliot Markham's eyes are basically like, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know. If only there was some way that I could achieve this. Now, it's a good idea to a point. Uh, it would be a better idea if all that money went to the wife, who seems very happy to spend it on Williamson City. The problem here, though, is and we're, it made, it's made very clear by Bo Williamson in that moment, because he's like, yeah, you would like to kill me and take my money. 
but all my money goes into a trust when I die. She gets, you know, enough. To, she gets to live on the interest, and it won't be enough to fund Williamson City. Um, that sort of that wraps that up, huh? We're, 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 we're not, not, no real solution to just murder a man and have to wait and see all that money go into a trust. We see Mark back at his office, though, uh, and he finds out that Williamson's wife is unreachable at the moment. She is at some resort or something, some like re- rehab ish. It sounded rehab ish. But it also sounds like, you know, when uh, Aaron Rodgers goes to like a, a dark room for 10 days to like sure. meditate or something like that. Might so just be a rich thing rich people do. If it sounded like a thing that rich people do, exactly. Uh, Markham's getting ideas, though. You could tell on his face, he is wearing on his face. He's got a lot of ideas. Um, when his secretary tells him, hey, she's, she's unreachable, she's incommunicado, he's like, I love you to his secretary. And the secretary is like, oh, shit, he loves me. And it's like, he was clearly joking. I needed that. Yeah, yeah right. she says, I needed that. Um, we cut over to Williamson, and he likes horse. He, he's got horses, and he likes horse. Um, horse. Yeah, a ho- he loves horse, of course. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> let's say, he, he uh, is, is taking care of his horse, going to just you know, spend some time with it, but he's going to go put it in the stable. It's time to get out of there. He hops in his car, and he's not alone. In the back seat, waiting for him is Elliot Markham with a gun. He points it at the back of Williamson's head, and here it is. He's like, well, get on out. You're not, we're not going anywhere. And he walks Williamson into the stable, uh, I guess where the horse is. Yeah, that's, well, I think it was the equipment shed. Equipment shed. Thank you. Right, exactly. So this is, it, it's a massive ranch. That's, that, that is the thing to know. Yeah. It's a massive ranch with like a ton of space and not a lot of people around. There was like the jockey taking care of the horse, but they seemed like a hired professional that has many duties, not like someone who lives on this ranch. So equipment shed, walk him into there. And we cut. We actually don't see the murder. We don't we don't see the murder. How'd you feel about that? Yeah, I think I thought it was interesting and it's kind of made clear a little bit why later. That's right. I, I, but, you know, in general, I do like that about Columbo where it's not we don't focus on that a lot. The murder itself, if it is seen, is often not very violent. Of course, it's not realistic, but that's not really what the show is about. We're not done with Markham, though. It's not like, oh, it's time for Columbo quite yet. Markham's got a few things to take care of. Um, He does go over to the main house at the ranch. Uh, Williamson, we mentioned earlier, had returned from Europe, and that's why he's, like, dealing with Markham now. Um, And and he was, like, only been back for a day. uh, 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 Markham, Markham, when he goes to the house, finds the bag still packed for the most part. He gets some fresh shoes, fresh socks, fresh underwear, a few shirts, throws it back into the suitcase, zips it up we get the idea what's happening here he's gonna make it look like Williamson came home and left immediately and that is basically what happens um and you know i'm starting to put two and two together here i'm like well you can't kill him because all the money goes into a trust he's trying to make it look like he's not dead and then in that case the woman the woman his wife would still be able to keep spending his money and it's like okay i see what we're going for yeah, that's exactly right. So you kind of it's a bit more complicated than a normal murder. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then and that it kind of immediately informs like, oh, that's why we're not seeing him get killed because it's not really about the the death so much. It's about what's going to happen and the the uncertainty there. Um, we cut to the dedication ceremony for a building that Markham has made. Has made. Um, I do love the uh, dedication. They, they, they reveal the model and people are applying. It's this normal ass looking building. It looks building. like the most normal ass building you would he's see like, in any a suburb concept. in fucking yeah. Ohio. Yeah, and he's talking like, yeah. like it's uh, the place where the executive can, can work and play and spend all his time and right. control his entire empire without ever having to go home. It's like, oh my God, sounds like a fucking nightmare. He invented a workplace. What was that thing called? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I can't remember, but like just the, the whole way he was talking about it, it's like that. That sounds like. Something people would have said in the 70s and never, ever again. Um, I don't know what the wife would think about it. <laughs> yeah, he did make that joke. Yeah, well, she won't be too happy, but you know, the, the titans of industry have to work. Uh, we do see here, though, Mrs. Williamson. She is back from her retreat, whatever it was. Yeah, a young, a young girl, too. Yes, young lady. Uh, this is this is Bo Williamson's current wife, uh, and she is... Just so happy to be here. She thinks what Markham does is the bee's knees uh, and doesn't try to hide it. And she thinks that that building that looks like it's in any office complex in, in, in the world. It's an Ohio office building. <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. Uh, she is very impressed by it and wants everyone to know that he is a genius. Um, but hey, 
this is where we get him. Columbo does show up. He's here for the dedication as well because he needs to talk to Mrs. Williamson because she called the police and said that her husband is missing. Only oh, there's so much great stuff. We have a very, very good like Columbo tries to enter a place that like normal people can't oh, go. Right. And there's yes, a police a officer it's like you can't go in there. And like it's a real schlubby police officer. Yep. It, it's basically like a schlub off between these two. Yeah. I absolutely <laughs> love it. And then, uh, yeah, maybe he's just like, I got the, the, the thing. I'm just going to go talk to a lady about it. And he's like, oh, all right. And as soon as he sees the, the badge, he's like, OK, you go. Of course, you can go in there. Uh, that was a very good moment. Uh, Columbo does enter the party, though. He finds Mrs. Williamson says, hey, why did you call the police and say that you're worried about your husband? And she's like, I have done no such thing. I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, says stuff like, you know, I'm not a bright woman, but I would know if I called the police. And uh, Markham is like basically hovering over the whole uh, hovering over her the entire time. And he's like, listen, bud, you know, she she would she said she didn't call or whatever. And he's like, well, that's weird. Columbo says, well, that's weird. Okay, so we got a call. Worried about that? What are you talking about? Here's ten reasons why it's not weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mark him very immediately <laughs> like that, like a barking little dog about it. Um, but Columbo's just like it's it's weird because someone saying they were Mrs. Williamson called and said that she thinks the husband is, is missing, and then people get to put it together. It's like, oh, this is probably Goldie, his ex-wife, who is still also a Mrs. Williamson. Um, she is uh, she, uh, uh, the new Mrs. Williamson, uh, who is, uh, let's see, Jennifer. That's right, Jennifer Williamson. She says that, oh, this Goldie is very possessive and all this stuff. You should probably talk to her. Before Columbo does that, though, he hangs around. He, he kind of, butts, he keeps butting in. And Markham is just very frustrated the entire time by this. So, yeah, who's this schlub ruining this beautiful ceremony? Um, it's great. And that we actually have an, one of the best transitions in Columbo here, where... Uh, we, we we close up on the new Miss Williamson, and she goes, "Believe me, he's very much alive." Mm -hmm. Then immediate cut to Goldie, he's dead. I tell you, yeah, he's dead. I tell you, yes, that was that was pretty incredible. I, it, before he leave, they they did just like you know, hey, where is Mister Williamson? And they're like, well, he's a globe trotter. He's always traveling. He's certainly just away on travel. And and it's like, but, but you don't know where he is. And they're like, yeah, that's normal. We uh, very often don't know where he's going. That happens all the time. So they establish that. But Goldie's like, that's weird because he has never ever left the country, even after we got our divorce, without calling me. He always right. calls it's, before he leaves. It's clear that they are both still close. Like she comes out and says, like, yeah. Uh, he divorced me because I was too old and married some hot young girl, but whatever. He's still closer right. with me. You know, interesting character. She doesn't even really resent the, the new wife that much. Uh, uh, Goldie's incredible. This is an all time great Columbo kind of side character, especially for one that's not the murderer or the victim. Yep. Just this really fun, uh, vibracious. I don't know. That's a word. Vivacious. Character. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, just fantastic. Uh, the lady who plays Goldie, Janice Page, still Still alive, 101 wow. years old, one of the last surviving stars from the golden age of Hollywood. She was um she was in the night she was in the uh, musical The Pajama Game. I saw wow. a stage version of that before. So um yeah, very uh interesting that she is still around. Cause she's in this one, she's kind of playing like an older lady. Yeah, right? you're right. Yes, she's an older lady in this show in the first season of Columbo, a show that ran for a very long time. Um Goldie does lay it down though. She, like you said, she meant she tells Columbo, yep, yeah, she gets he he gets youth from Jennifer. Everything else he comes to me for, and so I'm very close. I have all I have all these reasons why we talk constantly, and so the fact that he's missing is very weird. And and I I, I would expect to have known where he was going. Um, and this is clearly like the big wrinkle in Markham's plan. Yes, um, right. He's like, okay, yeah, if I just kill him and hide the body, everyone's gonna just assume he went away. You know, we see Markham also like take his passport and his clothes and put him into a suitcase. So, you know, he drives his car to the airport, all this stuff. So yeah, nobody should know, but he had no idea that he calls Goldie every time he leaves. Good news for Markham is that they find the car and Columbo as always gets a call wherever he's at. Cause the police always know where he's at. So they call this mas mas massage parlor, which is where Goldie's hanging out looking for Columbo. And they call him, Hey, Columbo, you got a call. He gets on there and he tells Goldie they found his car. The, all the things you're worried about it looks like he left and i'm so, yeah. like i'm sorry to tell you it just looks like he maybe this is the first time he went without telling you but yeah. that's a possibility so columbo goes yeah, to check yeah. out the so, car wait wait he's real quick because he says goodbye to the massage lady 
who yeah. is uh right yes <laughs> yes the uh, japanese woman i believe that's right and uh Columbo like sayonara C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she, she does this really long goodbye in Japanese and he's just tickled pink. He is so excited by this. He just got this, this big smile on his face. And then you're right. When he says goodbye, he goes sayonara C. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That killed me. I, I really love Columbo. That was a great moment. Um, but yes, they found the car uh, and we cut, we cut to that. And there is a bunch of police officers and other detectives just waiting around because Columbo is sitting in there and listening to music and not talking to any of him, any of them. He is, he's thinking he does. He's like looking around a little bit, um, but he's mostly like, just kind of like listening to the music. And then he starts looking at some of the other tapes in there and he puts in one tape and every tape he looks at, he's like, he's noticing something about every single one of these tapes. And then he takes out the tape to turn on the radio and he notices where the radio is set and that there's a difference between the tapes and the radio dial. Every single tape is country western. The radio dial is classical music. And this is going to bug Colombo for the rest of the episode. This is the one big piece. Like in other episodes, Mike, we get s- several smaller things. Here it's like it is all about this one thing that is bothering Colombo. Because it's such a big discrepancy. We've seen this guy. He is the most generic Texan in the world. Of course, he listens to country music. No way is he listening to classical. And you can see how Markin would make this mistake because he doesn't think there's any reason anyone's going to check the car. It doesn't matter what song he put on the radio. Everyone's supposed to just think Markham went on, or uh, that um, Williamson went on business. Right. It's only because he didn't know that Goldie would get suspicious because of a lack of a phone call that police would be involved in looking at this car anyway. That's right. So he um, th- th- this bothers him. But uh, that that is like basically the scene wraps up and uh, Columbo goes to meet both the wives at the same time. So we got all three of them together and uh, he he, dip, he, dip, he brings the conversation around pretty quickly to the music. And he's like, well, what kind of music did he like? And they're like, he only listens to country western. Uh, Jennifer even says, I've tried to broaden his horizons and it doesn't work. He still only listens to country western. It is definitive. That is what he listens to. He would never listen to classical. It's great. Um, gosh, there's that part where the the, the younger uh, Mrs. William to that one's like, has it has it occurred to you that perhaps his uh, horizons have broadened? Maybe you don't know him as well as yeah. you think you do. You can just kind of see her. It's kind of like, all right, uh, sure, <laughs> no way. Uh, we do find a little bit more about that Williamson City. It's a it's a it's a you know it's a big complex. It's a community. There's a bunch of stuff in there, but um, uh, Jennifer seems very involved, and she mentions mentions how uh, Markham talked to Bo. And while Bo might have been upset at, at some point, uh, Bo said he loved the plans at the end. And um, and they talked when he came back to town for that one day before he left. So now Columbo knows Bo and Markham had a conversation in that one day. Right. And it's like, well, this is this is a man I got to talk to. And this is when uh, this is when Goldie's like, I, like, no, Wilson would hate that. What are you talking about? That's mm-hmm. when. Yeah, she's like, oh, you know, maybe you don't know him as well as you thought you did. That's right. You're right. That was the, the kind of the key like, set off there because uh, Goldie understands Bo Williamson would never want to spend a bunch of money on something just because it had his name on it. He's not so simple. He, he's, he's maybe even more simple than that. He just likes having a big pile of money. Yep. Um, but yeah, they saw each other, uh, Bo Williamson and Elliot Markham. So Columbus, Columbo goes to see Markham at his office. He's not there. The secretary says he's probably at the university. He likes to teach. Uh, he, he's a professor in his spare time. Uh, right, but when he goes to that office, what does he see? But that ruined uh, kind of model of Williamson City. And like, man, if Columbo was already suspicious, like you just heard about how much he loved this idea. Yep. <laughs> and it's and even asked like, like, hey, who smashed this? Up. Like, yep. oh yeah it was William said it's great too because he like just barges into the office the secretary's not happy about it clearly doesn't want him around but yeah sees that and also uh notices uh all of those classical music records Mark him has a record collection to. yep and exclusively classical music yep so big discrepancies uh in two big things and it's kind of like it's both these discrepancies are screaming these two men's names. Uh, yeah. So Columbo's got a lot to figure out here. Um, he does go to see Williamson at the university. 
Uh, oh, actually, real quick, the, the secretary mentions, hey, Bill Williamson, he doesn't deserve Williamson City. He right. doesn't deserve to enjoy Markham, Markham's uh, genius, uh, but they were mad, and he mentions because, or she mentions, mentions he was mad because it was too expensive. So now Columbo's armed with quite a bit of knowledge to go and begin poking and prodding at Markham, uh, which he does so at the university. He goes, he goes and uh, sits on one of his classes, sits in the back and waits for the, the thing to be done. Um, right. And yeah, he's teaching about uh, Egyptian architecture and the pyramids and, yep, and tombs. Uh, wasn't it? Yeah, isn't it wacky? They would bury the architects in those things. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that. Would, thankfully, they don't do that anymore. Uh, but, you know, Columbo is paying it, paying attention. And um, it, when the class ends, uh, Markham's like, well, hey, Columbo, yep, you're you're here. You're investigating the murder. OK, uh, let's let's talk this out. Um, they, at first, he's like, hey, we found the car, but something's bothering me. The music, the music is set different. And, and then they, they have a little conversation about that. Um, but. Uh, Markham's mostly just like, okay, yeah, that, that, that might happen. That's weird. Figure that one out. Have fun with that. Um, but they, they also talk like, oh, hey, there was no flight with Williamson's name on it. And Markham offers up a solution for that. Well, he's a big, powerful tycoon. Isn't it possible you would fly under a different name? And, of course, Columbo goes, that is possible. I have to admit that. So At least it was possible in the 70s. I <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely thought that, too. It's like, <laughs> man, what a different time. We had trouble at the TSA when we went to Orlando recently because uh, my, my my one brother's uh, flight ticket had his birthday wrong on it. Mm-hmm. So he had to like, go to check out and go back through the line. So it's just a funny thing to be like, oh, you could just lie about your name back in the day? <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, Columbo doesn't really care about all that. What he cares about is what he was just learning about those tombs. And he's like, man, uh, it's it's pretty cool what you could if you were going to kill somebody. You can put it, just bury him under a pyramid, and no one would find him for a hundred years. Yeah. And, well, by the way, you want half of this candy bar? Yeah, yeah from my pocket. <laughs> it's been in there all day. Oh, you want some raisins? Still, I just love. Yeah, it was, it was raisins. A box of raisins. Because like, raisins first, and then the candy bar. Right. It's like, what? Like it's in the middle when he kind of makes it clear, like he under he saw the destroyed Williamson City. So it's like right when this guy thinks out, oh no, he might be on me. Hey, you want a candy bar? He's like, no. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, right. It keeps them on their toes, right? Because it's like. What is this guy's deal? It's like he's he's on track, and now he's some weirdo off of me a half eaten candy bar. Uh, yeah, it's 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 really good stuff. Um, but yeah, that they, they they that conversation kind of wraps up with Markham being like, yeah, that would be really interesting if you were to kill someone and you were to bury them under a building. Uh, it would have to be a building these days because we don't make pyramids anymore. Uh, but hey, and Columbo goes, yeah, that that's pretty interesting. Maybe that was something something someone could do. And then he does bring up the music after that, and they they have their conversation. Music but, and the model, and he's like, oh yeah, he smashed up the model. But then later we talked, and he saw he saw around, he saw my side of you. He loves it. That wasn't lying. Yep, exactly. So Columbo's like, all right, we'll, we'll leave the conversation there, and he goes to see the foreman at the construction site for the building uh, that they were dedicating as they were, as they were building it. Um, and uh, you know, Columbo's asking about like, Hey, what's um, what is all this stuff? And uh, the foreman's explaining, well, these are basically these giant piles for the pylons. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a bunch of cement and rebar. And these are going to be the foundation of the new building. And it's heavily regulated. We know exactly when it's laid. We know exactly who laid it, how many people worked on it. It is all kept track of. And so this pile was done on this day at this time. And Colombo notes it would have been right after the suspected disappearance slash murder of Bo Williamson. And this is, hey, a convenient time for someone maybe to dispose of a body. And so now Colombo's like, okay, this is another thing I need to take major note of. Yeah, exactly. And you, you know, as the audience were kind of like beginning to wonder, like, oh, is this what he did with the body then? Okay, that's real interesting. Right. And again, we don't know. Clever murder mystery thing to do. Yep, exactly. Uh, And since we don't know, it's like, does get our gears turning, um, which I thought was one of the more interesting aspects of this episode, Mike, where it's like, hey, oh, I like that. I'm like, trying to figure out exactly what is still going on with with right, how there's this a bit of more went down. mystery even for us since you know some episodes where we see exactly what the murderer does how he cleans it up what he does with the body and all these things um markham is there though they have a conversation him and colombo and uh they're standing right by this pile and Col- uh, colombo's like you know i'm just asking around about about williamson and and uh Marco goes well why are you asking here 
you don't think Williamson is here, do you? <laughs> As they're standing right next to this yeah. pile where Columbo is beginning to think maybe he is here. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, well, Columbo says, I don't see how that's possible. Uh, wink, 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 wink. Um, Columbo does go to see a doctor that Williamson had an appointment with. This is a little bit tidbit of information he picked up from the wives in that earlier conversation that he had a scheduled appointment for a doctor. And it turns out it is a cardiologist that is meant to update the batteries in his pacemaker. And, and it's, um, this yeah. cardiologist, by the way, played by John Fielder, AKA the voice of Piglet from all the classic wow, Winnie the I was Pooh like, stuff. Very recognizable voice. Yeah. Yes, and, and also is in 12 angry men. Uh, so yes, I was very excited when he popped up in this episode, very distinctive voice. As soon as you hear it, like, Oh yeah, that's just Piglet. Really great guest stars in this one. Uh, doctor says there's no way he would miss this appointment. Not really. He he is the kind of man that uh, would stay on top of this, care deeply about his health, and also wouldn't trust almost any other doctor, no matter how good of a specialist they are. Uh, he would make he would make this appointment no, no matter what. Uh, and uh, Goldie agrees, which is why she is at the office and waiting for Columbo and saying, "Do you believe me now that he's dead?" Because, uh, you know, like talk, talk, everyone you've talked to has confirmed what kind of man that you know, Columbo, that he is. He wouldn't miss this. And you, you get the sense. Yeah, Columbo's like he is buying into this. There's enough happening here that he's be be beginning to piece it together. Um, but she's still sure that Williamson is dead. Um, and meanwhile, Jennifer is playing a little bit of tennis with Markham. And th th this is, you know, we're, we're kind of cutting this after Goldie's finishing that conversation with Columbo. And Columbo's like, yeah, listen. I think I am buying what you're what you're putting down here, but I have nothing. I got nothing to go on. There's no body. There's no evidence. There's nothing. There is a, some music and there's a disagreement. There's a smashed model. I don't have anything beyond that. And you need a lot more to be able to prove murder uh, to make stuff happen here. So they're at the out of a bit of an impasse. So we cut to the, the tennis scene. And of course it's still, you know, uh, Jennifer, uh, hanging out with Markham and, you know, being flirty and weird and all that stuff. Uh, they never really imply more than that is happening. Uh, but you get the sense that M Markham is fully aware of what's happening here and him being able to take advantage of it. Um, and we see that Markham is a bit of a ladies man. His secretary is yes. kind of all about him, too. Yep. Uh, Columbo shows up uh, or no, Columbo doesn't show up here yet quite yet that they actually find something out in the woods when they hit their ball, the ball out there. They find a bloody cowboy hat. And it is uh, filled with blood all over the front. And it is definitely Bo Williamson's hat. It is custom made. So they call Columbo and Columbo comes to check it out. Right. And we, you know, he finds uh, uh, Williamson's old army tag. We know his blood type is uh, B positive. Right. I believe. And oh, that's the blood on the hat and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, Markham's like, where the hell does that come from? He yeah. seem very <laughs> happy about this. Right. It makes zero sense. Uh, it, so he begins to like think a little bit, but he, he looks genuinely shocked uh, because, well, it is something that he knows should be impossible because no one should have access to Bo Williamson's blood except for him. And he didn't put the hat there. Um, they, they do uh, learn something important here as well. Uh, the will has now been found. Uh, they are um, looking at the will uh, and Jennifer Wilson, Williamson has it and Columbo's looking at it and Markham are looking at it. And it says Goldie's going to get 25% of Bo's estate and uh, Markham brought this out specifically because he was aware that something like that could be possible. And he is looking for some help in pointing the direction at someone else, someone else that might have a motive and saying that she would get 25%. Uh, that, that offers a little bit of misdirection here. And so he's very happy to have that in there. Columbo though is like, Oh, you got the will there. That's great. Why don't you let me hold on to that? I'll take it back to, to Jennifer. Or I think I can't remember who he's supposed to take the lawyer. He's supposed to take it back to someone. Uh, and he's like, I'll, I'll do that then. And, and Mark is like a little frustrated, but you get the sense that Columbo's now going to have a good chance to take a look at this will and find out if there's any other motives in there as well. Right. Right. That that's exactly it. And, you know, pretty shortly after this, Columbo even kind of talking to Goldie. Um, hey, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, you falsified this evidence. Yeah, right. right. Um, this. <laughs> Markham actually shows up uh, to, to talk to Goldie. Yes, and he's like, they're having that conversation like where he's like, you know, tell the truth. And Columbo overhears enough of it and he walks. He's like, just, yeah, 
Let's talk well, about it. Really shows up because, uh, it, yeah, it is just uh, Goldie and Markham. And Markham's like, maybe uh, I should call Columbo over here. And Columbo just walks into yeah. the set like, oh, let me save your time. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I overheard what you were talking about. And they basically do say, hey, Goldie, tell the truth of what's r- happening here. Uh, and, and Columbo's like, yeah, I said that we found out that you're, um, you're B plus, plus po- or B positive yeah, yeah, blood type as well. You got a bandage on your leg. You clearly cut yourself. So. Yes. And she's, you know, her motive here is because she just wants to give the police evidence because there's still this worry that they're not taking this seriously. And that she they admits don't it. Maybe think it's, yeah, she admits it. Uh, and hilariously, Columbo's like, ah, no harm, no foul. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I'm just going to forget this happened. Just falsifying a little evidence in a murder case. That's fine. Yep. And it's, uh, yeah, but he, he does understand what's happening there. So it's like he does kind of let, let things slide to kind of keep things gre- greased and going forward. Um, but, you know, Columbo's in a situation now where it's like, okay, yeah, that was a little falsified uh, evidence put point in the wrong direction, but we got that solved. I still have nothing, though. And so he's got to, like, begin pushing things a little bit harder. This leads him to go talk back to the foreman at the construction site. Uh, and uh, while he's doing that, and the, the foreman's kind of explaining things pretty basically again, Markham shows up again, sees them discussing the building records, and Mark, Markham compares uh, Columbo to like a tick. He's like, he's always there. Clearly, now we are past the point where Markham is going to put on airs. He is fully frustrated with Columbo at this point. Right. And I think it, it is here where he, he just basically spells it out. I was like, why don't you... Uh dig up one of these pylons then if you're so certain he's like takes it to the pylon the one that's like if you see anywhere he's right here right right he's being real uh kind of just blatant about like yeah go ahead and do it then a couple's like well why would you tell me to do that it's like oh maybe it's false bravado maybe i know you can't because it's expensive and club admits it would would be expensive and difficult Uh, i think does a Columbo have a line is it here or later where they talk about evidence, like, oh, I got to come up with something concrete. Yes. Uh, so, yes, uh, Mark <laughs> points out the conundrum of like the, how expensive it is. Uh, Columbo says, I need to find the body to prove that prove it. So who did it. And uh, and then, yes, he says, yeah, I need to come up with something. And he waits to be concrete. And and yeah, yeah. and it's like, oh, God, uh, oh. Yes, yeah, me. <laughs> exactly. God, it's, oh. it's very good. But um. It ain't going to be that simple. Uh, Columbo needs to get the city to help him dig up this pile. Um, and there is a there's a little bit of a line at the office. There's a very long <laughs> line at the city office to get this. We get some comedy play here yes. for a bit with Columbo and lines. Yes, he like walks in the room. He sees a long line. He sort of like, you know, walks around the line, kind of looks in there and sees like, is this really the line? And then he, a few seconds later, we, we don't actually, the camera doesn't follow them in there. A few seconds later, he just walks back out and gets to the back of the line. Um, and he's got to go talk to someone, like actually just find out the basic information of what's going to happen here. It's like, oh, that's going to cost a lot. You're going to need city approval, mayoral approval. You'll need requis- requisition slips. You also need to get um, estimates from city engineers about how much it would cost. And you need to go over to this office right now and do that and get that first before you do anything else. Um he he does this and of course there's another line and he's got to wait long again but after the, this little bit of comedy they do cut to he's successfully done this and excavators are now digging up that pile and i i i'm like i kind of didn't know exactly what to expect i'm like i don't think we're gonna find the body it, it feels like he's gonna get away with it uh, i i and but i'm like what's gonna happen next i was still kind of unsure of what's gonna happen here right and it's pretty interesting there's clearly a lot of people there like like asking questions, reporters like, hey, how much is this costing the city? You know, people are uh, upset. Markham's there. He seems to be kind of gloating. Goldie shows up because she's excited because she's hoping that, yeah, OK, we're going to finally find the body and prove something here. And Columbo you looks know, Columbo's sick. acting nervous. Yeah, he looks sick. And uh, and uh, the press just starts yelling at him. And he's like, oh, and Columbus apologized. And like, I didn't know the press was going to be here. There must be a leak. And Markham's like, no, I called him here. I'm going to make a statement when we're done. Columbo yeah, looks even Columbus, sicker after that. Columbus says, well, maybe I'll make a statement of my own. Yep. He right? does say and that. Like, yep. Ooh. Yeah. Um, the gloves are off a little bit here. They're still digging, though. And they're still digging. And they're not finding anything. And they keep digging. And there's nothing. There's nothing. They don't find anything. It, there is nothing there. And this was a huge mistake. Columbo has made a massive error. This is a mistake. And right. he looks terrible. He's embarrassed. And Markham has won. And and, right. that, and it's that that's that. 
Goldie's like, oh, are you going to get suspended? He's like, oh, I don't know. He's I like, don't oh, know. I'll buy you a drink, lover. It's so cute how she calls him lover. Yes, They're so cute, cute pet name. Yes, <laughs> it is. And uh, yeah, Columbo looks pretty devastated here. This is, this is bad. Uh, oh, no. Is our boy is our boy messed up, Jeff? Yep. And Markham's taking a little bit of a victory lap, and he turns to his crew, who is sitting on the side watching this happen, watching this the, the, their work be undone. He's like, don't worry, boys. Just come back in the morning and pour that new concrete. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do anything right now. Let's just leave this hole open in the ground until the morning. Um, and, and, and Columbo just has to kind of go with his tail between his legs. Um, and we cut to Markham at the barn getting the body. <laughs> That's the next right. scene. Immediately was, just, just goes to get the body. It was just in that tool shed where he seemingly shot him this entire time. Yep. He never moved it from there. Yep. He's, and, and it is immediately clear. Immediately clear. This was maybe a ruse the entire time, and he intends to now take the body and go put it at the bottom of that pile after all and entomb the body forever under this building. Right, because if it would have been a good hiding spot before, well, now a pile that had already been dug up once and searched, like nobody would ever find this. Exactly. So it's it's kind of really is a very devious, very clever scheme, uh, and he's going to go put it put it in there uh he does get a flat tire on the way back though which is, i'm <laughs> little, like what the fun little piece of drama <laughs> yeah i was like what the hell it's, uh, is this gonna lead to something here and he gets his he talks his way out of that where like the there's because there's a cop that comes up immediately behind him is like well pop the trunk let me help you change this tire and he's like well it's it's flat so can you go get me help and the cop's like oh, okay I'll, I'll go do that so he leaves him and he quickly changes the tire and gets back on the road so he gets away with it um but he, you know, he shows up and he's going to put the body in the tomb. And then, of course, in that moment, all the lights turn on and out comes Columbo and all these other police officers and all these other people waiting for him. And Columbo is like, you know, you gave it away when you tried to finesse me. When you tried to get me to, to dig up the pile, I started wondering, why would you do that? And it, it occurred to me it's because, it, it, like you said, it was a good hiding spot, but it's an even better one once someone's already searched it. Yep. So he had to play along because what Columbo knew was the body, and he still really had no idea where the body was. So he kind of had to trick Markham to bring the body to him. Yep. And uh, uh, you know, Markham says you have to admit it's pretty clever as he sort of just walks over to the back of the police car and admits he's caught. Uh, and Markham gets in, and uh, and you know, Columbo mentions like you know, the, it would all happen with the music because Carnegie Hall and Nashville don't mix. Markham goes, no, they don't. And <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing that happened here. That's the whole conflict. Episode ends. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah and the, and the, from the beginning. Yep. There was a fun. There was a fun moment. You know, earlier when you talked to the doctor, uh, the, the doctor Piglet did kind of admonish Columbo for smoking those cigars. Yeah, and to, like say, hey, look, I deal in pacemakers, and we see Columbo uh, at the very end there. He does. He lights up a cigar, but in the end, he throws it down and stomps on it. Part of me is like, man, it would have been cute if Columbo just quit smoking right there, but I know the cigars are iconic. Yeah, and iconic. He goes back to it. Yeah, it would have been and fun if he never smoked again in the smokes. series, though. I, I, I right. agree. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I was kind of up and down with this episode when I was watching it. At the end, I'm like, no, that was that was very fun. I was like, he is like really hung up on this music thing. Why is it so, why is this such a big deal? And like, you're right. In, in, in hindsight, it was like, that is such a big difference. And it like illustrates who these characters are. Of, of they were never going to be able to see eye to eye and they were always just trying to get something from one another and they never had anything in common and that was the fundamental problem with the foundation of their relationship and they just illustrated it really quickly with the music and then i thought the the clever the deviousness of the plan from markham was really impressive and i really enjoyed a lot of the fun moments in this episode right and i love how like it starts like way back with that stuff about egypt and it's like like Columbo and Markham were kind of both prodding each other along in this somehow in a way that is almost maybe a little confusing or convoluted sometimes, but then it all actually does work and there's a good payoff there. So much of this episode for me is about uh, these fantastic guest stars. Again, Janice Page as Goldie is an all time great. She has such a big personality. That is uh, a fantastic, fun character. Uh, that does bring us to our ranking of episodes, though. Uh, right now, we have Suitable for Framing at number one and Murdered by the Book at number two. Um, Lady, Lady in Waiting is number three. Death Lends a Hand, Short Fuse, and Dead Weight round out the first season. This is the last episode of the first season, though. Uh, where do you think a murder or blueprint for murder, excuse me, where does that end up on the list for you? Yeah, it's definitely 
I, I like this one. It's definitely not on the bottom. It's not at the tippy top either. It is somewhere in the middle, Jeff. Yeah, I, uh, I, let's see. Lady in Waiting is very good. Um, yeah, I do like Lady in Waiting. It's not, it's probably not as good as Lady in Waiting. Definitely not as good as Murdered by the Book. Yeah, I, I think it's better than Death Lends a Hand, though. I think it probably does go right behind Lady in Waiting. Um, I think I, think I do like it better than Death Lends a Hand. I know, I think Death Lends a Hand is generally more popular with people. And, you know, we have a we have a better murderer in that one. We have Robert yes. Culp for sure. But it's yes. not even my favorite Robert Culp episode. And, really. and, and yeah, and uh, that's I, I do still think that's a classic one. But I think there's uh, enough fun deviating from the formula in this one. And it all so, sort of pays off in the end that I think that's what I'm most impressed by. Um, but yeah, I think uh, so I would probably put it so it would go suitable for framing murder by the book, then lady in waiting, then blueprint for murder. And then yeah. Death Lends a Hand. I like it. Uh, now, for the Killer Hall of Fame, uh, uh, you know, for this first season, I think we're going to have three. Uh, and the three we have right now are Dale Kingston, uh, Ken Franklin from Murder by the Book, and then Beth Chadwick, who I think is uh, from Lady in Waiting, right? Um, I, 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 it's a close one for me. I'm not sure if I can knock off one of those three or this killer. <laughs> No, like I said, like the killer's fine. It's not the best part. So it's very, it's a good character. It's very effective, and I like that sort of way that he plays off of the victim here, yes. right? Like, yeah. So that that is good. But no, I don't know if it's quite uh, top tier killer material. Okay, so our Hall of Fame is unchanged. Dale Kingston's still number one. Uh, then Ken Franklin, and then Beth Chadwick. Uh, all right, I think I think that's gonna do it. Any other final thoughts about the episode, though, Mike? I think I actually like this episode more the second time I watch it because again that like some of it is a little convoluted, a little hard to follow, and it, it always feels a bit like a gambit roulette. Like, oh, can Columbo really like like know that A is going to lead to B, then lead sure. to C, then lead to D? But watching again, I see the logic play out in a much more clear way. Yeah, I, it's um, I felt they laid it out pretty pretty nicely. I thought that the um, everything sort of the, all the the parts that they set up and then knocked down later, all the payoffs were pretty good uh i don't think they nothing was necessarily like a home run except for right again i think the, the the setup for how the murder was supposed to work and the cover-up was supposed to work uh but everything was just really solid and all the uh like you said the fun guest stars um i think the, the main cast all very good just across the board a really solid episode Yep, absolutely. And uh, hey, believe it or not, that is it on season one of Columbo. How about that? Yeah, so it's uh, seven episodes. Uh, season two, it's, let's see here, it's actually eight. It's just eight episodes and so not that much longer. The rest of the, that's pretty typical for the rest. That's of pretty it. typical. There's like a short season. There's yeah, a four short or six episodes. Uh, Colum uh, oh, or is that four? That's four, yeah. Season four is six episodes. Season six is three episodes. So, yeah, it, it'll it'll bounce up and down here or there. Uh, but yes, yeah, seven episodes for season one. And that means the next episode will be the first episode of season two, which is Etude in Black. I'm glad you said that word before yeah, I can, because I'm not sure. Etude, 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 etude. etude. I think you just, that? you always just kind of, you just like, like tend to sneeze halfway the way. Etude. That, that E has the same uh, accent on it as Pokemon, so it must be E. Yeah, e yeah. You're right. Uh, is this John Cassavetes? Is that the guy from uh, uh, Fugitive? Maybe. The Fugitive. Let's see. John Cassavetes. Uh, I'm just placing him. It looks familiar, though. Uh, I don't see the Fugitive in his wiki, no. so maybe not. Maybe not. Um, all right. Uh, we will get to that, though, here real soon. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. A uh, lot of fun stuff, though, in Season 2 of Columbo, including our, our boy Spock. He's going to be I in am. There. That's of, of everything I've seen before. It's my favorite episode. So that's later in season two. Yes, but it we, is. We'll get to a stitch in crime. And I am uh, very excited for that. Yeah, you don't you don't want to miss that. Like Mike said, later in the later in the season. So for, we'll get to a bunch of stuff before then. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for hanging out with me and talking about Columbo, Columbro. Thank you, Columbro. Until next time. See you all then, Columbros. Goodbye. Goodbye.